Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last session, we learned the various way of conversion of numbers of different number systems to decimal. In this session, we will observe different techniques of conversion from decimal number system to the other number systems. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will convert decimal numbers to any other number system. We will first observe the conventional approaches. Thereafter, we will see the different tricks to do the same. So, at first, let's begin with the conventional approach of conversion from decimal to binary. So, we will learn the approach by finding out the equivalent binary of the decimal number 126. So, the conventional approach is to take the decimal value first and then perform integer factorization using the base of the number system to which we would like to convert the decimal value. Since we are looking for the equivalent binary number, that's why we will perform the integer factorization with the value 2. Now in integer factorization, we keep the record of the remainder and the subsequent factorizations are performed only on the quotients. Let me illustrate. So 126 by 2 gives us the quotient 63 and the remainder that we obtain is 0. Now 63 by 2 gives us the quotient 31 and the remainder will be 1. Then again 31 by 2 will give us the quotient 15 and the remainder will be 1 again. Then 15 by 2 will produce 7 as the quotient and the remainder is 1. Again 7 by 2 will give the quotient 3 and the remainder will be 1. Thereafter, 3 by 2 will produce 1 as the quotient and 1 as the remainder. Finally, 1 by 2 will produce 0 as the quotient and 1 will be left as the remainder. Basically, we will keep on performing the factorization until the quotient becomes 0. So, this is the anchor condition. Now, we will record all the obtained remainders in reverse. And finally, the equivalent binary of the decimal 126 will be obtained, that is, triple one, triple one, zero. Now, why are we recording the obtained remainders in reverse? Think about it. 2 times 63 is 126, hence the remainder is zero. And the quotient is reduced to 63 from 126. Then again, 2 times 31 is actually 62. Therefore, the remainder is one. And eventually, we are reducing the decimal value to zero. So technically, we are moving from the most significant bit towards the least significant bit. However, the bits are obtained in reverse. Now in the last session, we learned that the bitwise left shift means multiplication by two. Similarly, bitwise right shift means division by two. Let's now observe the conventional approach of conversion from decimal to octal. We are going to find out the equivalent octal value of the same decimal number 126. So we will first take the number 126 and since the base of the intended number system is 8, we will perform the integer factorization with 8 only. Now 126 by 8 will produce the quotient 15 along with the remainder 6. Then 15 by 8 will produce the quotient 1 and the remainder will be 7. Finally, 1 by 8 will give the quotient value 0 with the remainder 1. Similar to binary, if we record the remainders in reverse, the equivalent octal value of the decimal number 126 will be 176. Now let's observe the conventional decimal to hexadecimal conversion as well. So we will take the value 126 first and keep performing the factorization with the base value 16 until the quotient is reduced to 0. So 126 by 16 gives the quotient 7 and the remainder is 14. Then 7 by 16 will produce the quotient 0 along with the remainder 7. Now we are talking about hexadecimal, right? And 14 in hexadecimal is represented as E. So again, we will record the remainders in reverse. 
and the equivalent hexadecimal value of 126 will be obtained as 7e. So, these are the conventional ways. Now, let's learn the tricks. Since we have already obtained the equivalent binary of the decimal value 126, during the conversion to octal, we can use this binary value. If you remember, during the session octal number systems, we learned that the symbols of the octal number system have a special significance with 3 bit binary numbers. Following that, now we will start grouping 3 bits from the LSB towards the MSB. Now, in the most significant group, we have only one digit. So, in order to make it 3, we will append two zeros to the left. Now, 110 specifies the octal symbol 6, 111 specifies the octal symbol 7, and 001 specifies the octal symbol 1. Hence, the octal equivalent of 126 is 176. Using the similar method, we can also perform the decimal to hexadecimal conversion. If we have already obtained the equivalent binary value, we can use it for conversion to hexadecimal as well. Since 4-bit binary numbers have a special significance to the hexadecimal symbols, we will start grouping 4 bits from the LSB to MSB. Here as well, we have one less bit in the most significant group. So, let's append a zero over here. Now, triple one zero is 14 in decimal, which in hexadecimal is E. And zero triple one in hexadecimal is 7. So, the hexadecimal equivalent of 126 is 7E. Now, observe, the factorization with 2 is a bit tedious and time-consuming process, isn't it? So, instead of that, if we perform the factorization with 16, the time taken by the process will be less. So, 126 by 16 will give the quotient 7, along with the remainder 14, that is E. Then, 7 by 16 will produce the quotient 0, and the remainder is 7. Recording the remainders in reverse, we obtain the equivalent hexadecimal value 7E. Now, we can use this 7E for the further conversions. So, E in binary is 1110 and 7 in binary is 0111. Now, omitting the prefix 0, we obtain the equivalent binary of 126 that is 111110. Now, using this binary value and grouping 3 bits from the LSB to MSB and if needed, we will also append extra zeros to the most significant group which in turn will help us produce the equivalent octal value 176 because 110 is 6, 111 is 7 and 001 is 1 in octal. So, in this session, we observed various ways of conversion of decimal numbers to any other number system. Alright people, that will be all for this session. From the next session onwards, we will observe different types of solved problems on different number systems. So, I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.